Welcome everyone, welcome to another prophetic message today. If you're new to the channel, we do believe that we can hear from God. We do believe that we can hear God's voice and know the times that we're living in and how we should be living and responding to all that's going on around us today. So I just want to encourage you with a message that's been on my heart uh, for the last week or two now. Um, and it's a word that's very timely, a word that's very uh, pertinent to all that's going on around us. And I think you're going to be encouraged, you're going to be blessed, you're going to be strengthened by it. So do stick around for this word. Um, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for clicking on this video. Do subscribe if you're not already a subscriber because we do try and bring some good quality, prophetic content, anointed content that's going to build you up, that's going to help you grow as a Christian, that's going to help you get closer to God in these days that we are living in. The word I want to bring to you today is, is about shaking, and it's being unshakable in times of shaking. It's a very relevant word for the time that we are living in right now, and you know, we've uh, seen uh, a shaking take place from uh, March 2020, and that turned out to be COVID. It was a pandemic that went around the world. And whatever you believe about it, whatever your thoughts are on it, you will agree that the world was shaken by it. The world was shaken up by what took place and how the world responded to it. And a lot of things changed. And, you know, even just this year, we've started to see glimmers of hope that we're coming out of it. Some nations have lifted their restrictions and dropped their mandates and passports. And we're starting to see the, 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 the kind of virus abate, that the cases are dropping and they're not spreading as fast. So that's good news. And, and it gives us reason to rejoice. But as soon as that began to happen, what happened? <laughs> we saw war break out in the Ukraine as Russia attacked and invaded that sovereign nation. And whatever your views are again on that, we have to admit that it is literally grabbing the world's attention. It's on the news 24-7. And I have to even admit myself, I've, I've been looking at it probably more than I should have. And, and I want to encourage you today that even though we are in another shaken, we are part of a kingdom that cannot be shaken. God said shakens would come in Haggai 2.6. He said, once more in a little while, I'm going to shake the heavens and the earth and everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Why? For his glory. God wants to get the glory. God will get the glory, but it's not going to come without a shaking. And that's because people don't just want to give God the glory. Uh, people don't want to just recognize him as Lord, but one day every knee will bow. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We have the choice and we today are saying, yes, Lord, I want to bring you glory. I want to give you the glory. So we're not shaken, but we're part of a kingdom that cannot be shaken. You know, it was in September 2019 that God showed me this word. I saw earth shake, not earthquake, earth shake. And it was six months before COVID broke out. And I knew that something was going to happen. Something was uh, on the horizon that was really going to shake things up, shake the world, shake the nations. And it turned, it turned out to be a, a virus coming from Wuhan, China. And now we're seeing a, a war that could have big implications around the world. And it already is. It's already, already affecting different nations because of um, uh, gas supply, because of uh, sanctions, because of uh, different resources that are unable to be released. And it's all because of another shaking that's taking place. God said there would be shakings right to the end. And it's a sign that he's coming soon. It's a sign that we're coming to the end of the age. And Jesus is about to be re revealed and released and come back to the earth. So it's good news, guys. But the bad news is the shakings are here and they're going to continue. And they're probably <coughs> excuse me, going to increase and intensify until we see the day of our Lord coming back. But here's the good news. <laughs> Even in the shakings, we can be unshakable. Why? Because we're part of a kingdom that can never be shaken. If something's shaken, it means it's not a part of God's kingdom. And it's temporary. It's worldly. It's of the flesh. And it's going to disappear. It's not going to last. 
but God's kingdom will endure. And you are part of that kingdom today. And I want to give you some some just sh- short, simple steps as to how you can stay in God's unshakable kingdom. I know you're going to be blessed. And I just want to say the word shaken, by the way, that, that, that comes from the Greek rorash. And it means to quake, to tremble and to shake. And, and even when we see this, guys, we can step into a place where we're stable where we're at peace, where we're calm and all is still, always always well with our souls because we're in God, we're in the Lord. And there's a, a few, few verses I just want to give you. You can write these down, you can memorize this, do whatever you want. But Psalm 15 gives a list of things that the righteous do. And it says at the end, whoever does these things will never be shaken. Psalm 55, 22, it's a great verse, you'll like this. Cast your cares on the Lord. And he will never let, he he will sustain you and he will never let the righteous be shaken. That's something we've got to do daily. Cast our cares. Keep casting your cares. Don't carry your cares, but cast your cares. I should do a rap about that. Isaiah 54, 10. It says, though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed. You know, if we saw nuclear war break out, even if that happened, God says, my unfailing love for you will never be shaken. That's such a wonderful, great promise. And you know, that leads me into the first point, is to get back into God's Word. We need to get back into the Word to know what God's saying, to know what God has already said about us, about the world, and about what's going to happen in the world. If we're not in the the Word, it means we're in the world, and we're in the the news, we're in the media. And I have to admit, I've been doing that this week, more than I normally would, more than I should. Uh, It's been like watching a series on Netflix that you can't escape from. And I've been checking up on the the war in Ukraine. And, And God just said to me, listen, he said, stop now. Just focus on me. Get back into my word. Uh, as a priority, I read the word every day, but get back into it. Make it your your life life source. Make it the number one thing that you do, because you know if we rely on the the world's media, if we rely on the news, guys, it shakes and it changes and it moves and it contradicts itself and it cannot be relied on. You can't build your life on what the world is saying, on what the media is saying, even on what's going on in the world. Because it might not be accurate, it might not be true, it might come from a a biased angle, it might have a certain perspective and you don't see the whole picture, but God's word never changes. God's word is a foundation that we can build our lives on and build a good life on. It's It's alive and active, guys, and it cuts through the lies. It cuts through the the conspiracies, it cuts through the rumors, it cuts through the fear. And that's why we need to get back in to the word of God. That's why Jesus said, man doesn't live by bread alone. (laughs) We need food. Food's good. But we live also by the word of God. Our souls need God's word. Every word that's coming out of God's mouth nourishes us. It sustains us spiritually. And guys, you need that today. We need that more than ever before. And, uh, you know, you can study the word, you can study it systematically, chronologically, uh, thematically, doctrinally. You can do it on your own, you can do it with people. But the main thing is to get into the word. I've done five years of theological training in the past. But you know what? I find the best time of studying it is, is with God, in the spirit of God. And, and with a concordance of commentary, whatever, you, you know, tools you've got at your disposal and just letting God bring his revelation into your life through his word. And it will bring the, the, the word alive. The Holy Spirit will bring things to your mind, to your spirit that you haven't seen before because the word is alive and active. And, and every day it can feed us afresh. Every day it can be like fresh manna coming down from heaven, but you need to get in the word to hear what God's saying, not what the media is saying. So that's something I've done for myself uh, just recently, and I pray that you will do it for yourself as well, because when you do, you will come back into that kingdom that can't be shaken. You'll come back in to a teaching that never changes, but endures forever. Number two, 
This is so important, guys, and this has really helped me, and this continues to help me in my Christian walk, but that is to fix our eyes on Jesus. Just as I was writing this down, I, I discovered Psalm 16, and it actually says, um, the psalmist says, I keep my eyes on the Lord. He's at my right hand, and I will not be shaken. So there's a link there. We, we fix our eyes on Jesus and then we remain unshaken. If you fix your eyes on the world, if you fix your eyes on what's going on, if you fix your eyes on pandemics or wars or rumors of wars, listen, you will be um, disturbed. You will begin to panic. You will be like Peter who saw the waves that he was standing on and he began to sink because he was looking at the water. He was looking at the turmoil. He was looking at the storms and he wasn't looking at Jesus. He started off looking to Jesus, but then he began to look at his, his circumstances, his problems. Guys, when we look at the things around us, we look at um, the things that are affecting us in our bodies, the things that are going on in our finances or in our families or in our relationships, and we look at the negative aspects, that's when we begin to sink. That's when we take our eyes off the Lord. But when we look again to Jesus, he lifts us up, he builds us up, and he he fixes us on the rock that will never be shaken. And I've done this all throughout my life. And um, God's led me to different places. I've traveled a lot around the UK, particularly. And I've always been led by the Spirit of God. It's always as I've, I've, I've looked to him that he's showing me what to do. Hebrews 12, it gives us great advice. It says, run with perseverance, the race before you, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Jesus started that work of salvation and he's going to finish it. He's going to complete it. It's not going to be left undone. He's not going to abandon you just at the, the last, but he's still with you and he's going to work it out. But we need to keep looking to him. And that Greek word there for look, it's so much more than just look at something. It means to completely take your, your eyes off everything else and to lock onto that person or that thing in front of you. And don't take your eyes off. And that is something we need to do, is to lock on to Jesus. <laughs> and the more we do, the more we, we stay in a place of peace, the more we will, we will see him and know what he's doing. And we won't be thrown, we won't be uh, discouraged, we won't be depressed, but we will be full of his spirit. And we'll know that he's with us and for us. And I've done it so many times, guys. In fact, a lot of the visions and the prophetic messages that I've received and I've shared on this channel, as you know, they've come not because I've paced the floor and said, Lord, I need a word. I need something to share on YouTube. But it's come when I've just sat down and looked to Jesus. I've just sat with him. I've just enjoyed him and I've just focused on him. And that's when he started to release uh, re revelation. He started to release a prophetic message for someone or for someone's. And guys, you can do that today. Listen, let me give you a little tip. Turn off the news, maybe after six o'clock and, and pick up your word, pick up the Bible and, and spend some time with Jesus. Just look into him and not at the circumstances around us. Spurgeon said, I will never cease to look on him who ever looks on me. And that's so good, isn't it? And finally and thirdly, we need to discern God's voice. You know, they said in World War II, there was two voices that the whole nation recognized above every other voice. One was of Winston Churchill. And obviously, he was the leader that God raised up for the hour to lead the nation um, into a place of victory against Hitler and the Nazis. And the other voice was C.S. Lewis. And he featured regularly on the, the national radio during the wartime. Bring in people a message of hope. Bring in people uh, what God was saying. <laughs> Basically, bring in the word of God in a, a form that they could understand and appreciate. And they were the most recognized voices at that time. And God will raise up voices in every generation to lead his people through. To lead people into a place of safety, into a place of, of grace, into a place of um, peace even when there's, there's storms, even when there's wars. And we need to discern the right voice in our lives because the, the enemy will come with his voice and he'll say, you're no good, you're not enough, 
You've, you've messed up. God's abandoned you. He's left you. And he'll bring thoughts of condemnation. And they're not God's thoughts, but they're the enemies. But we need to understand and discern the voice of God that's saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm with you. I'll never leave you even to the end of the age. I made you. I formed you. And I'm going to complete that which I started in you. Are you discerning God's voice today? There will always be different voices in our lives, but we need to figure out and work out which one is of God, because that's the right one. That's the one we need to hear. And God is speaking to us today. And God wants you to recognize his voice. Jesus said, my sheep will hear my voice and they'll follow me. They won't follow the voice of a stranger. You know, my children know my voice. And if I call them, they'll come. Well, hopefully they'll come. And they know the voice of their dad. And we should know the voice of our father today. He's saying, I love you. I've got an amazing plan for you. You might feel like you're abandoned. You're alone. You're in, you're in pain. You're, you're in a situation that's, 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 that's uh, not of your making. And, and it's difficult. And it's testing. It's a trial. But listen, I've got better plans for you. I want to bring you through. I want to build you up. I want to restore you. I want to anoint you. I want to give you a new future and a new hope. And if you believe that today, say amen. There's a great verse just in, in closing. It's Psalm 62. And it says, um, you, God, have shaken the land and you've torn it open. Mend its fractures for it is quaking right now. That's what we're seeing right now. This is like a prophetic word for the nations right now. The earth has been torn open. God has, has torn it open. But the psalmist says at the same time, mend its fractures. And I just pray today in Jesus' name that, Father, you will mend the fractures in Ukraine and in Russia. Those people are suffering because of the actions of their leader. I pray today, Lord, you'll mend the fractures in Canada where there's been a great division. There's been a great split and there's been great opposition. I pray you'll mend the fractures in Australasia and in America and in Europe and in the UK and Asia, even in the Middle East. Even in Israel today, I pray you'll mend the fractures in people's lives and families that are watching this message. That even though they might feel things have been broken open, that they've been wounded in some way. Father, you say that even if, when you wound, you also heal and you bind up. And I just pray that people will just experience and re receive your healing touch today. That you will mend the divisions and the brokenness in our lives and in our families, relationships and churches today and the nations in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. You, you break down, you destroy, but you also build up and you restore. And I pray you do that around the world and in all the people's lives that are watching this message today in Jesus' name. You, my friend, are part of a kingdom that cannot be shaken, even if the whole world is shaken, which it is right now, and it will continue to be you will never be shaken. Bless you guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of this channel and this ministry. If you want to connect with us, you can go to citylights.org.uk. If you've been blessed by the message and you want to you, you support us in what we're doing and help us to keep bringing messages to you and around the world, then uh, there's links where you can go and you can uh, help us, um, pray for us and support us financially as well. But we appreciate all and every one of you, because you are a real blessing to us. And I just pray that you'll have a, a blessed week. I pray that you will fix your eyes on Jesus and not on the world, not on what's going on out there, but what's going on inside as you, you abide in him, in Jesus' name. I'll speak to you soon, guys. Take care.